Twisters is a rebooted disaster movie throwback to the Twister disaster movie from the 90s. Twisters is an entertaining enough of a film with good special effects and cinematography. Unfortunately, Twisters doesn't do much to improve upon or solve the story problems of its predecessor. Twisters has a convoluted message, and I feel like the things the film doesn't say are far more impactful than what it does say, leaving the film in a sorry state at the end, and the viewer scratching their head about what they even watched. Twisters begins as a teenage dream that turns into a nightmare for the main character, as the Twister kills most of her friends and boyfriend in the first few minutes. While this does take the film to a somber note in the beginning, it quickly goes back to being a high school teenager movie with clicks and over-the-top positivity. The smiling one-liners and the highlighted social dynamics of the tornado chasers basically highlighting the jocks and the nerds. This exuberance is needed to mask why this film makes no sense. A whole company's purpose is to analyze and track tornadoes so when it destroys someone's home, a real estate developer can swoop in and buy the property on a steal. There's no need for the tornado scientists. Just have a guy listen to the weather report and scope out whose home has been destroyed. The YouTube tornado wranglers is slightly more plausible, but it's also hard to believe a whole outfit could be sustained from such a niche topic. I will say the cinematography and special effects of the film are quality. The film would be an even sorrier state if the VDB clouds simulating weren't good and the cinematography was boring. It wouldn't surprise me if a large part of this movie was just an R&D project for special effects. I guess it would explain the poor writing, at least. I will appreciate some good pieces of writing where they occur, though. The tornado coming through the movie screen when Frankenstein comes alive is a great nod to the fact that the tornado is a monster. I also appreciate the paradigm of the main character being unable to be romantic until after she has solved her personal challenges with the tornado. The symbolism of her losing so much of herself, including her sexuality, because of the tornado kills her boyfriend and friends, and she's only able to regain these things after she figures out how to stop a tornado, is poignant. I think the trope of overly sexualized disaster movies where the sexual energy resembles the nervous energy before disaster strikes is something that has already been played out. The lack of any serious statements at all does leave the film feeling like an ambivalent, no-purpose, politically correct piece. The film does have an interesting liberal person reaching across the aisle to the rural conservative person to try and make a connection, though. There's an anti-corporate message with the Storm Par Company being generally bad, while the Storm Wranglers, rodeos, and country lifestyle being seen as generally good. You know this is movie was written by a liberal person because the villain is a petite bourgeois, the scummy real estate developer. This is a subconscious or intellectual allegory for Trump taking advantage of honest conservative country people. This is either lazy writing or pathological in the people who wrote the film. I'm going to guess intentional, but just lazy because the, the writers seem to leave out an element for some reason. The plot of the film is that Tornado Alley is having worse and worse tornadoes, but no one really wants to say why. It's really a mystery, even the tornadoes themselves. They have a more mystical quality to them. We still don't fully understand what causes them to form. While this does help the Twister fill the role of the monster in a similar way the shark in Jaws does, it's a little silly. This little tidbit is unspeakable. It is wrong speak, but everyone knows what it is. The thing making the tornadoes worse is climate change driven by human action. This is something no one in the film is allowed to acknowledge, but it haunts the film like a ghost. In a way, it is the real monster of the film, and the horror of it is that no one can acknowledge it and are being forced to put on an act and have a fake smile on their face and scratch their heads and say, gee, this weather is crazy, I have no idea what's causing it. While an oil executive has a gun pointed at their head just off of screen. Not really, but it makes the movie a lot funnier to imagine it. This is a cognitive dissonance similar to Stalin's Soviet Russia. In Stalin's Soviet Russia, plenty of fundamentally competent films were produced, but underneath a well-made film would be a piece of just plain, inaccurate propaganda. But everyone had to go along with it. Slavo Zizek analyzes one of these films in Pervert's Guide to Ideology. Definitely worth a watch if you can. Now, Twisters isn't a state-funded film, and Stalin isn't interjecting himself into the story, but the propaganda is still there. The real issue is that most people in Soviet Russia knew it was propaganda. While today in our ideologically free society, quote unquote, 
We go and see twisters and we say it was fun or stupid or whatever, but, but most people don't know that a seed is being planted in their head. This dumb movie makes a very minor Overton window shift in people's minds to accept the climate catastrophes that are coming and to accept that nothing can be done about them except putting a band-aid on it like how the main character in Twisters does, which is very heroic, but not very smart or pragmatic. Twisters to me feels like a D-plus film. It is competently made by professionals, but once you get beyond the literal things you see on screen, the film is either almost incoherent or just propaganda. There could have been a far smarter film made here if there was only an acknowledgement of climate change and the characters were actually fighting to solve the root of the problem. You could pretty much have kept most of the set pieces of the film the way they are and just changed some dialogue, but I think these choices were intentional to not step on any toes and in doing so, this is a piece of propaganda normalizing climate disasters and climate change. Thanks for listening to my analysis. It would mean a lot if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel. If you wouldn't mind considering supporting me on Patreon, it goes a long way to helping me make more of these videos. Thank you.